What's happening, dogs? Mr. Allen here with a video on solving quadratic equations by factoring. For this video and these four examples, we're going to focus on factoring a trinomial with a lead coefficient of 1. And I know what you're saying, man. That guy's a 4 there, not a 1. What's up with that? We'll get there. We'll get there. Calm down. It's going to be okay. Let's start with example 1 here, okay? x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Step 1, you got to be equal to 0. We're good to go, man. No extra step. That guy right there, I'm going to have to do some stuff. So next thing. What multiplies to my constant here, what multiplies to that 10 and adds to 7 at the same time? What two numbers would do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is think about what multiplies to 10. I got 1 and 10. I got 2 and 5. Do either of those pairs add up to 7? Yes, the 2 and the 5 do. So those are the two numbers I'm going to use in my factors. I'm going to have x plus 2 and x plus 5 equals 0. This right here is equivalent to the green part up there. It's in factored form. Now, how could I use that to my advantage to solve? Well, if I can get either one of these two equal to zero, then the whole thing equals zero because zero times anything is zero. It's called the zero product property. So I'm going to set x plus two equal to zero and x plus five equal to zero. And when I subtract two on both sides, I get x equals negative two. Do the same thing over here. Subtract five, subtract five. I get x equals negative five. Those are my two solutions. And if I plugged it into the original, I get zero. That's dope, man. Super dope. All right, there we go. First example, done. In the back, all good to go. Next one. Like I said before, we got to get it equal to zero. So I'm going to add five on both sides. Now I'll have x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals zero. And I got to figure out what multiplies to 5 while also adding to negative 6. How am I going to get a positive, negative, what? Well, there's only two numbers that multiply to 5, right? It's 5 and 1. And that adds up to positive 6, but I want negative 6. What if I did negative 5 and negative 1? Because negative, negative, multiplied together, gives me positive, but we'll add up to the negative 6. Bingo, bango, we got it, dog. So I got x minus 5, x minus 1 equals 0. Five, negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. That's factored. If you multiplied it back out, you'd get back to that step above. Cool. Now i got to set these factors equal to 0 because if I can get one of them to equal 0, then the whole thing equals 0, right? If I can, you know, this one here, I'm going to get x equals 5 after I add 5 to both sides. If I plugged 5 in there, I'd get 0 times 4. That's 0. I don't care about the other factor, just about the one that I got to be zero. The same goes here with the one. X minus one, I'm going to add one. I get X equals positive one. Those are my two solutions for that particular equation. All right, now down to the one where we are very concerned. Right? We're like, bro, huh? How's that going to work? Right? It's going to work. Okay. First thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to set this equal to zero. Okay? So we got 4X squared minus 8X minus 12 equals zero. Didn't have to be our first step, but I'm going to make it our first step because that's what we said all of our first steps were going to be. Consistency is key. What are all these terms divisible by? 4. Now, if we were just asked to factor this, I would take out this 4, and I'd have x squared minus 2x minus 3, all that equals 0. But because, because it's an equation, I can actually just like divide by 4 and everything, and that 4 would be just completely gone, right? I could just divide both sides here by 4, and these fours are gone, right? I could have done that the step above. I wanted to show the factoring, right? Because some questions, they just ask you to factor. But that's going to be zero. So now I have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals zero. And now I have what I had above, right? It's as easy as the, the first one that we had there. Easy, I know. Not that easy, necessarily. Factoring is challenging because you got to think of two things at once. What multiplies to negative 3 and adds to negative 2? 3 and 1 are the only things that multiply to negative 3. And if it's going to multiply to a negative, one needs to be negative, one of them needs to be positive. Well, I'm going to want my 3 to be the negative 1 because I want it to add up to negative 2, right? That's going to be a positive 1 then, equals 0. Had this been a positive 2x, then the 3 would be positive, the 1 would be negative. Now I can set these equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. Don't want to run out of room. I know I'm getting close. x equals 3 x equals negative 1. A lot of people just say like, oh, I just changed the sign. I just changed the sign. Be careful with that, with factoring and just being like, I just flipped the sign. That's my answer. Because then you end up flipping it before you go into your factors and you flip it again and things get all messed up. Okay? Show some steps. Show some work. 
takes an extra three seconds, you'll get the right answer, okay? Be careful. Cool. Last one over here. Let's see here. What color should I use this time? I feel like this, this one looks too similar. I'll go back to orange. I'm going to go back to, ooh, yeah, I'll go orange. I'll go purple. I'm going to go purple. Secret stash. Okay. Oh, boy. It's cute. What? How about this? GCF thing again, right? Let's do the GCF. But this time, when I take out an X, I can't divide out an X and divide by X on both sides because then I lose a potential solution, okay? So we definitely have to leave that one as a GCF there. All right, I got X squared plus X minus 42 equals zero. Close my parentheses. This is a little squeaky. I apologize. Well, what multiplies to negative 42 and adds to one? By the way, that X is just going to be chilling. So we're going to look like this. X, parentheses, parentheses, zero. Okay, that's what we're looking at. Ooh, numbers that multiply to 42, negative 42, so they're going to need to be one apart. How about 6 and 7, right? Because positive 7 and negative 6 would add to 1. Positive 7, negative 6 multiplies to negative 42. That's it. All right, so we got x plus 7, x minus 6. Had this been a negative x, these signs, once again, would be switched. So now I've got three different factors, three solutions. It's a cubic. That means I'm going to have three solutions. So I'm going to have x equals 0. That one's done, right? I don't have to solve or anything. I got x plus 7 equals 0, and x minus 6 equals 0. So I'll subtract 7, and I get x equals negative 7. Add 6, and I get x equals 6. So we've got negative 7, positive 6, 0, one squeaky marker, but I wanted to use the purple. I mean, the purple looks pretty dope, right? I wish it came in a non-squeak format. But there we go, guys. Four different problems there. Standard, this is like your most common factoring is the AM method or reverse FOIL. Factoring when the lead coefficient is one. Always look out for a GCF, something you can pull out to make your life a little bit easier. Then you don't have to factor with the lead coefficient. But there we go with that one. That's pretty dope. Awesome. Moving on to factoring with the lead, co uh, lead coefficient next. Right, if you're in the long form video here where we're doing a lot of factoring, but otherwise, have a dope day.